get ready There's a train of coming You don't need no baggage Just get on board All children of God are by destiny children of exploits designed to thrive where others fail to conquer the obstacles others fear and to do the impossible but not understanding how great a destiny God has in view for you you'll need faith to make it a reality Faith Moments brought to you by Patrick Penny Ministries would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty sickness and disease it will enable you stand in the midst of opposition and now Reverend Patrick Quayne Today we are continuing our topic on understanding the dealings of God ladies and gentlemen I said if you do not understand something please make sure that you don't jump right away and talk about it or make any comments about it without first trying to understand God most of the time does things for his people and most of the times when he is behind some of the things we go through we blame the devil without first checking to see where it's coming from are you listening to me and so here is a situation where Job found himself in the place where God has allowed Satan to mess him up if you will now the primary direction or instructions came from God himself because without that Satan would not have had that chance or the opportunity to do what he did to Job and i believe that happens to you and i as well as God loves us and one of the ways in which God wants to promote you or send you to where you ought to be is through the area of challenge the area of challenge we may not see it as that because we haven't come to understand how God operates and that we know him as God of love and love and love and so he is however the other side of him we haven't come to know it now you have to understand that he says i am the lord your god i kill it and i make it alive are you listening god created everything the good the bad and the ugly the bible says that he has even created the bad for the time of doom and so you have to understand that God is able and capable of doing anything he is God you, we, we, you know beloved we need to come to the place of understanding who this God is uh, he sits in the circles of the universe and he does what he please he can choose to 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 promote you and your promotion will will come as a result of going through suffering When I hear some people saying that no no suffering is not from God deception when I hear stuff like that because you have not come to a place of maturity in the things of God do you think that Job went through what he went through in an exciting atmosphere no Job went through a serious suffering time of his life that you have no idea what that is you have no idea what that is I mean the guy loses 10 children in one day Ten. You just lost, you know, a pen. You're looking for a pen, or you just lost few dollars here and there, and you are you are screaming. You are screaming. The guy lost ten children in one day, and who gave that permission? Satan couldn't have done all that without God's permission. And as we read last week in the book of Job, the first and the second chapter. If you didn't get the chance, please take your time and read the first and the second chapter. you will see what i'm talking about here because today we are continuing and we don't have much time because we need to cover a lot of grounds amen we are starting today from the 11 verse in the second chapter where after the wife of job have come out to tell job that why don't you curse god and die because this suffering that you are going through is just too much i cannot bear it I'm not the one going through you know per se but I'm also going through with you as a wife. So why don't you just curse God and die and be free so that I can also be free. Job look at the woman and said you speak like one of those foolish women. Tells me there are a bunch of foolish women out there too. You got to be very careful but that's not what we're talking about. Amen. So he says you speak like one of those fool- foolish women when God gave us everything that was nice and dandy we didn't complain. Now that he's he's uh, let me read that to you so that 
you, you know that this is not coming from me, but it's from the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse chapter 2 of Job. Chapter 2 of Job. Chapter 2 of Job. Verse 9. Then his wife sent, said to him, his wife said to him, Do you still hold to your integrity? Curse God and die. Then Job said to his wife, he said, You speak as one of the foolish women speak. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? In all this, the Bible says Job did not sin with his lips. Shall we accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? Listen, Job knew that this is coming from God. Because remember, I told you that Job was a, a spiritual man. Job was a man who had a spiritual understanding. Job was not a religious person. Are you listening to me? I told you the other day that, re that, that religion means going back into bondage. Ari, re, meaning return or going back or, or reverse. Okay? The legion, legion means bondage. So that's what, what religion means is going back into bondage. That's what religion is. Christianity is not bondage. Christianity is not a religion. Amen, somebody. And so Job was a spiritual man who had a spiritual understanding. Beloved, I keep repeating myself. God says that they that worship him or want to worship him, you must worship him in spirit and in truth, not in religion. In spirit, you have to know God by the spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot serve God with your religious mindset, with your religious self. You will not see him. You will not know him. You will not understand him. Amen. And that is why people who are matured in the, in the spiritual or walk of life, they don't just open their mouth and talk. When they hear something about a friend or somebody that they know or whatever, they don't just open their mouth and give ill advices. And we're going to see that even in the, the life of Job, when his friends had come around him. Amen. We're going to see that. And so don't be surprised that, you know, you, you, something you may be going through. God allows you to go through something because he's preparing you for your promotion and therefore some People you may call, quote unquote, friends, start talking some stuff about you and all that. Don't worry yourself because they have, they are not mature yet. It not, listen, I'm telling you that they are not mature. It don't mean a thing how far they've gone in their education. You can be the educated person to the top, close to heaven itself, but you lack the spiritual understanding experience. It means nothing. That education means nothing. Are you listening to me where God is concerned? And so don't be so quick. I keep telling you, don't be so quick to talk. I have seen people open their mouth and immediately they open their mouth. You just know where they're coming from and you know the level of their maturity where spiritual things are concerned. Are you listening? And so we are going to even see that in the life of Job as we read along from verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11. Here now we see that now Job's three friends Head of all this adversity that Job was going through, that had come upon Job, amen? And each one of them, the Bible says that they, they said to themselves or they made an appointment together to come and mourn with, with Job and to comfort him. And uh, verse 12 says, And when they raised their eyes from afar and did not recognize he, him, Job, they lifted their voices and wept. And each one tore his robe and sprinkled dust on his head towards heaven. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights. And no one spoke a word to him. For they saw that his grief was very great. His grief was very great. His grief. His grief. Can you find out what this person may be going through and try to comfort that person instead of just talking? Instead of just running your mouth with your self-righteous attitude? Chapter 3. Let's look at chapter 3. Talking about understanding the dealings of God. Beloved, until you come to the place to know that 
God who created his heaven and earth and all that is within. He chooses whatever method he wants or he has created to do whatever he wants to accomplish whatever he wants. Are you listening to me? If you were a child of God, beloved, get this straight in your very core of your spirit. God can do whatever he wants to do. God can do anything. Are you listening? I, I, I'm trying to, I, I wish you can see the picture that I'm trying to paint to you, that God can do anything. And I mean anything. Imagine anything, God can do it. I, I, I remember years ago, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, really uh, mature or to this level uh, in the word of God and in understanding uh, some of the ways in which God operates. And, uh, and I was reading the Bible one time and I saw that the scripture says that, and God sent evil spirits to torment King Saul. And, and I look at it, I read it again, I read it again. So, wait a minute. God sending evil spirit, demon spirit to torment. Now, now, how does demons affiliate or connect with God? Well, I, it's like, no, 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 somebody, no, I'm not reading this thing well. I read it time and again, I went, and then, and then I went to somebody who was more understanding and mature with understanding the spiritual things of God than myself. And he says, yeah, what you are reading is, is right. Your eyes are not deceiving you. God send demon spirit to torment King Saul. And then this person began to educate me in some things where God is concerned by his experience. I said, wow, wow. And then, and then he opened a couple of scriptures and then he showed me what, what God said himself. One of which was, I am the Lord thy God. I kill it and I make it alive. And I was like, whoa. Yes, indeed, beloved. This God you are, you are seven. See, that is why you have to also understand that God will kill for your sake. That one you didn't shout, Amen. Amen. God will kill for your sake. And so you got to be very careful. When, when, when you hear something about somebody, and especially if you call yourself a child of God. Because as a child of God, you must have a spiritual understanding of who your daddy is. Are you listening to me? He does things that no one takes the glory. Hallelujah. When it comes to the, the, the sufferings of life, sometimes you may be going through some areas uh, or some challenges in your life. It's not because of what you have done wrong. It's, it's just because God chose for, for that is the avenue he wants you to go through so that you through that you may learn some things like some of us who've been through, you may learn some things, know who is truly a friend, know who is truly on your side, know where to go, where not to go, who to associate with, who not to associate with. I'm telling you something. God, when God decides to do what he wants to do for you, it's not always the nice and dandy parts you think of him. But I want you to know that in the end of it, it's always going to be glorious. Are you listening? But don't forget, God says that every idle word will be judged. So whatever is coming out of your mouth, be very careful. Check it. Is, that, is, is, is it an idle word? It's going to be judged. Sometimes we are going through stuff or when, like I said, when you see somebody going through something, some kind of area of suffering, some kind of area of challenge. It's not always because maybe God is punishing that person because of what that person has done. God may have just allowed that person to go through this area just so that in the course of it, you will learn by the time he brings you to your expected end, you will come as a seasoned are you listening to me? Moses, Moses was having everything so nice and dandy in the corridors and the, in the area of uh, Pharaoh's house. But you see what, what took place over there for him to kill somebody and then even eventually run away. And in the desert, and I mean, 
I mean, what the guy was, did not even have food to eat and all those things and all those things. Moses was to be seasoned by God, not by Pharaoh, by God. And so that when the time came, the right time came for God to send him to accomplish the purpose for which Moses was born. Moses was well seasoned, knowing who God is. Are you listening to me? Moses knew the power of God. The children of Israel, they just saw his, his signs, but Moses knew him. Do you want to know God? Then prepare. Stop, stop talking too much. You want to know God, then stop talking too much about, about things you hear of people and jump and, you know, you, you hear a rumor or whatever and you add A, B, C to it and you start making stories about it. Stop. You will never know God by doing that. Are you listening to me? You will see that as we read along, the friends of Job, they started talking. They even started blaming Job. I mean, they started accusing Job like, oh, who, who goes through an adversity like this if that person had not sinned, if that person hasn't done anything? But what did Job do? Job they didn't do nothing. Job did not do nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, if you want to even know what Job was doing, where God is, was concerned, the Bible says that Job was constantly on daily basis making spiritual sacrifices to God just in case his, his sons or his children even sin against God. The guy was a spiritual man. He wasn't, he wasn't one of this, you know, who just talk here, there, and there. No. Are you listening to me? When, when, when somebody, well-educated person like Paul came to know who God is. Oh, beloved, I'm telling you, it. I mean, now I know it's a lot of people around. I see them, I realize, I, now I know they don't know even who God is. No, they don't. Going to church on Sunday because everybody is also going and you take your car, you dress up and go, does not make you a spiritual person. Are you listening to me? It comes with maturity, understanding. The Bible says that wisdom is a principal thing and therefore you should get wisdom. But in all thy getting, get understanding. If you lack the understanding, beloved, you may be 100 years old, but when you open your mouth, we all know that you are as foolish as a baby who doesn't know nothing. God has a way of doing his things. We will see by the time we finish with this episode, you realize that by the end, at the tail end of, of, of Job's life, Job had twice more than he had before. God gave him more. He passed the test. How ready are you to pass the test? Don't expect God to just give you everything on, on, on a silver platter. Don't expect it. When you ex listen, you expect God that let you don't, then you don't know him. You haven't come to that place yet. Are you listening to me? If, if you really want to walk with God, because such through the scriptures, not, not a single person who had walked with God, who had walked with God, doesn't show you a scar on their, on, their, on their life. Every one of them can show you a scar. You want to call yourself a general with no scars? Please give me a break. When was the last time somebody spoke ill about you? When was the last time that you wondered there, why would somebody why would somebody want to just plot evil against me and I haven't done anything? Well, so when you see some people, you know, and all those things and 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 what they may be going through, don't just jump and talk. God has a way. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that when you see your enemies even going through challenging times and suffering, don't rejoice. God may change his mind and, and reverse that issue on you. Don't you see it, it, this is this this is what I call understanding the dealings of God with maturity. Because on many, many people have not come to that place yet. Amen. You haven't come to that place yet. Maturity. Spiritual maturity. I'm not talking about religious, you know, self-centered lifestyle. No. Walking with God is what I'm talking about. Knowing him, knowing who he is. 
The children of Israel, they were standing by the, the ocean, looking at the enemies coming. All they saw was that we're going to die. Oh no, this is it. This is it for us. We're going to die. Moses, We. I, I wish there were some stones on this sun. We will pick it up and stone you, Moses. You brought us here for our enemies to come and kill us. You should have left us alone in Egypt for us to go through the sufferings we were going as slaves. That's what they saw. But what did Moses see? Moses saw another demonstration of the power of God. He says, just be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Ha ha. Are you listening? Just see. Just wait and see. Don't, don't panic. Don't be too quick. Don't be so judgmental. Beloved, don't be so judgmental. Don't be too quick. Now, now let's 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 go on. Chapter three. Chapter three. Now we see, <laughs> we see that after all this, the Bible says that now Job opens his mouth. Okay. After this, Job opened his mouth. Verse one of chapter three. Open his mouth and curse the day of his birth. You realize that he did not curse God. He cursed the day of his birth. And Job spoke and said. May the day perish on which I was born. May the day perish on which I was born. May the day perish. All right. And the, the night in which it was said a male child is conceived. Job is very, very, very angry. That's another thing that you don't even know who may be going through whatever challenges. And then you are there just talking about the person. That person may be even be going through some angry situation. I can't believe I'm going through this and I can't believe instead of you praying for that person, you rather so that person, look at what Job was even going through with his friends sitting next to him. All right. Job says, verse four, may, may that day be darkness. May that day, the day in which a male child was conceived. May God above not see it, nor the light shine upon it. All right. May darkness and the shadow of death claim it. On and on and on. If you look at verse 20, he says, Why is light given to him who is in misery? Job was in misery. Okay? Somebody says, many years ago, a um, very good um, uh, friend of mine in the ministry, he says, Patrick, do you know something that believers, Christians, are the, are the only people who kill their wounded? I didn't understand, but I, I think I understand now. And I got some sense in my head. I understand. He says, Christians are the only people who kill their wounded. What a saying. Amen. All right, look at verse 20. Job is still talking. Why is light given to him who is in misery? In misery. And life to the bitter of soul. Who long for death, but it does not come. And search for it more than hidden treasures. Job at this time is going through some very serious challenging times. Now remember, it's not because of anything evil that he has done. It's not of anything bad that he has done. But it's God just allowing him to go through this so that he can bring him to his destination as purpose for him by birth. Amen? Now this is God. Now don't ask me, can't God have just blessed him without going through this? Well, this is God's way of doing things. I said, God can do anything he wants. Who are you to question him? Who are you to question him? He is God. Beloved, come to that place of understanding to know that he is God. He can do whatever he wants. That's God. I don't know what else to tell you about, but the fact that this is him. He chooses to, to do anything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He chose to say that I'm not going to use the sea to destroy mankind anymore. And so I even make a vow, a covenant for you to see that anytime you see the rainbow in the skies, that's the covenant. That's just to remind you of what I said. I'm not going to do that anymore. That's God. If God chooses that you, you're going to lose your job and by so doing, you're going to find him because of what he is going to allow you to go through. That's what he's going to do. Are you listening? 
I, I, I am bringing you to the place of understanding. Listen, I know this is not one of those messages that make you shout hallelujah, praise the Lord and all that. Because see, we need to mature. God's children must, God wants his mature children. All right. He sent one of the minor prophets out of the 12, Hosea, to come and tell you that my people are destroyed. You are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You have no knowledge of who I am. You have no knowledge. And because you don't intend to learn or to acquire knowledge, well, I have also refused you. Because I want you to know me. I want you to find me. I want you to seek me. That's why Jesus even came to remind you and I also. He says, he says, ask. Ask questions about God. Seek him. The Bible says that those who diligently seek him, diligently seek him and keep knocking to find more. Keep knocking to find more. Amen. And so God wants his children to increase, to grow, to mature, not to stay as babes. All right. And so in chapter three, we see that. Take your time and read it. We're going to continue. God willing, when we meet, we have to meet again next week. But I'm talking about the dealings of God, understanding the things God does, not to say that God created you, that you should come to this world and suffer. No, but God has his own way of doing things to get you a scar so that when you look at that scar, you will remember that God is still able. You will know that he's able are you listening? He's able to do more than you can ask or even think. Well, I'm going to stop here with you today. Next week, God willing, we will continue. I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. I stand at the river I must reach the other side Don't know how I'll get there The river's cold and deep and wide So strong is the current I'd be surely swept away Stronger though is my Father's hand And He will make a way this trial is that river, but I've been here before. I've learned from the last time that I'll reach the other shore. 